Boxes exist in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Some of them are physical, some of them are psychological, some of them are metaphorical. And as valuable as they may be, some may say that it's within our nature to expand beyond them. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 89 of Paradigm Shift Radio. In this episode, we discuss why and how to think outside the box. This was another co-created community group discussion, and throughout the episode, we had numerous people join us to practice sharing their thoughts. Paradigm Shift Radio is a digital space for us as consciousness to reflect thoughts, ideas, and experience off one another as we continue to collectively help each other grow. Everyone is invited to take part in this global platform to share their voice, so in addition to sharing the show with your friends, be sure to get involved with future episodes if you'd like. We encourage you to continue the paradigm shifty conversation where you are and give some thought towards helping grow a physical paradigm shift community for your location. All of us have a role to play, so thank you as you continue to explore and become more of who you are. Join us again for future episodes, listen to past episodes online through the main website, share it around with your friends, keep it shifty, and enjoy the flow. One love. If you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. That's a little quote from our uh, good buddy, Albert Einstein, who uh, recently celebrated a birthday, which was very coincidentally on the uh, world-renowned Pi Day, March 14th, 3.14. And this is your other good buddy, Skull Babylon, Rebirth from Within, a.k.a. Brendan Wolfshield Culleton joining you once again for another exciting, mind-expanding, conscious conversation episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. So, of course, shout out to everybody who's already with us, tuned in live tonight. And if I can get another 1111 from somebody in the live chat, just to confirm that things are sounding A-OK, we are going to be rolling along with this episode and talking all about how and why to think outside the box. So it's a very interesting topic of discussion, and this, of course, is going to be a regular group discussion, meaning that we want to hear from you. We want you guys to call into the show tonight. We want you to be able to be a part of this conscious conversation. And one of the simple ways that you can call into the show is either through a regular phone, and you can do that through the guest call-in number, which is listed in the Blog Talk link, which you are listening to at 347-539-5493. Or you can call in through Skype, which is super easy, and you don't even need Skype credit to do that. Just click the Skype icon, which is also near the top of the link in the Blog Talk radio link, and just launch Skype, click OK a couple times, and it will dial you into the into the queue, and I'll be able to see you there, and we'll be able to bring you on. So got got some 1111s in the live chat, so thank you guys so much. And uh, we've currently got 30 users, as it is, in the live chat. And uh, again, just reminding you guys to please share the show. This show, part of the reason why we do it weekly is because I want this show to be a tool for all of us to use as something to be able to share, as a direct invitation that we can share with other people to get them involved, to get them aware of not only this radio show, but also the amazing conscious community that is happening here through the Paradigm Shift Project. And just bringing you guys up to speed, I got a little bit of community news and, of course, just introducing people to the Paradigm Shift Project, those of you who are not familiar with it. ParadigmShiftCentral.com is the main website that you want to check out. Paradigm Shift Radio is just a branch of this project. And, of course, you can find the individual Facebook pages at Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio and also Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central. And the whole idea of this project is that it is creating digital and physical space for open-minded discussion and uh, also meditation, which more so happens in the physical space, but we will be doing that within the digital space here tonight. And the whole idea behind this is that all across the world right now, there are emerging paradigm shift communities. And these paradigm shift communities, you know, they're not like literally a village where people are having to build houses and things like that. They are a community in the sense that Somebody there, the admin of a local community, is going out of their way to set up and organize regular events to host these open-minded discussion and meditation circles. And this is happening all across the world. There's more than 50 paradigm shift communities, and that number is continuing to rise. And these conscious conversation circles are a physical format of what is happening here tonight. So tonight is a digital format 
of a paradigm shift meeting. And again, it's all about practice. This is really all about practice. You know, we're not trying to really say like, hey, I've got it all figured out, but rather we're saying like, you know, here's here's a couple pieces of the puzzle that I want to bring to the table, which is uh, definitely going to be very interesting to see what comes to the surface tonight in, in theme with the whole topic of thinking outside the box. Because again, this is all about encouraging you to think for yourself. You know, this isn't about telling you what to think. It's about encouraging you to think for yourself, which is in itself a practice. It is something that not a lot of people or not, you know, some people, they, they have trouble doing that. And, and maybe we'll talk about that as to why some people have difficulty thinking outside of certain boxes. So, of course, like I mentioned, my name is Brendan, and you can personally add me at facebook.com slash skullbabylon. And you can check me out on YouTube at youtube.com slash skullbabylon as well. And there's lots of videos there. And just to bring you guys up on some of the recent community news, yes, we are still within the full moon phase as it is right now. You know, I always count the full moon as being a couple days. And uh, well, yesterday, March 15, 2014, was the was another global meditation event that we had and of course shout out to everybody who may be tuning into this episode following their involvement with the global meditation and that was a really really awesome event as per usual show to chad foreman and you can find the links for the recording of that through this blog talk radio profile and also through my youtube and also through paradigmshiftcentral.com where you can find all sorts of other conscious media so it's a full moon Things are just rocking. We're riding those waves. I'm personally really excited. I had an awesome day. And uh, just in terms of other community news, I want to be able to share with you guys some of the most recent paradigm shift communities that are emerging. So again, the fact that some of these people are doing this, like I would, I would, I honestly think that every person who's listening to the show is a person who can potentially help create a paradigm shift community where they are. So, I mean, just to give you guys a sense of numbers, uh, sometimes, you know, and again, this is why I encourage us to share it, just to give you guys an idea of where we stand, what our collective our collective success is, is proving out to be. And sometimes Paradigm Shift Radio has maybe around 200 to 300 live listeners, and then afterwards we have maybe around like between 500 and 1,000 people who listen to the show afterwards. So, I mean, if you're ballparking that, that's around 13 hundred people and you figure 1300 people individually in different locations all across the world like that theoretically could equal 1300 paradigm shift communities which in itself is all about just lifting the consciousness raising the vibration if you want to use that term just elevating consciousness bringing these topics to the forefront of our conversation circles and just bringing new ideas into this reality for us to be able to talk about experience and share together so some of the most recent paradigm shift communities that i want to be able to give a shout out to is one of the ones that got set up last week is Paradigm Shift Kalamazoo and this is actually in Michigan and a shout out to Melissa who is the admin for that so I'm going to post a link for that in the live chat and of course going to be including that in the show notes and the show notes are always included in the YouTube versions not in the blog talk so if you hear something and I say it's in the show notes make sure you check the YouTube version of an episode which is usually posted up within a day later so shout out to Melissa she's a yeah she's doing awesome I know she's got some shift buttons there and she handed out some shift buttons and uh, it was really cool to see somebody posting on the Par- on Paradigm Shift radio page saying like, hey, somebody at school gave me a shift button and now I'm checking this out and I think it's really cool. And I'm just like, yes, they're working. <laughs> and of course, I'll tell you more about the shift buttons in a minute and also the chance to be able to win some for yourself in this episode through the community. So the other Paradigm Shift community that I want to give a shout out to is Paradigm Shift Adelaide. And this is, of course, admin by the wonderful Rachel. And this is in Adelaide, Australia, I want to say like Adelaide, Victoria, Australia. I don't know if it's like a specific, I, I don't know my geography too well, but it is in Australia. So Paradigm Shift Adelaide is what you can check out. And I'll post a link for that as well. And of course, big shout out to Rachel. She's going to be getting some shift buttons. I'm going to be mailing some shift buttons. The first batch of shift buttons are going to be going over to Australia. And uh, yeah, so that's in South Australia, just to confirm. So R- Rachel is going to be getting her own batch of shift buttons in Australia in the near future. And if anybody else outside of North America, America is looking to get some of the shift buttons just message me on Facebook and I'll be able to get you set up for that so the next paradigm shift community so there's quite a few like literally there's about five in total that I got to mention and these have all popped up within the last week and these are all you know just like those first C's 
So some of them, you know, some of them are still getting things figured out, but the intention, the intention is there. And then it's also, again, this whole idea that if you build it, they will come. And these paradigm shift communities, you know, if you want to get an idea of what happens within them, go to the main paradigmshiftcentral.com website, check some of the videos that we have there inside the paradigm shift meetings. I myself am with paradigm shift London, Ontario, Canada. And I actually want to mention something about the most recent meeting that we had. So the next shout out that I got to give is for paradigm shift Kansas City. And this, of course, is being admin collectively by team Brad and Katie. So you've actually heard Katie was on the uh, Paradigm Shift Radio not too, too long ago. She was the one who was talking about doing um, oxygen therapy and talking about how she healed herself. So Brad and Katie don't actually live too far away from each other. So they said, hey, you know, like we're both interested in doing this. Let's team up together, you know, like let's make this happen. So if you got an extra friend who's involved with you in helping make this Paradigm Shift community, it definitely helps keep you just liable but not even liable it helps keep you motivated you know because sometimes it's hard for one person to do it by themselves but if you even just have like one other person then sometimes you know like you guys can help each other out you can help carry the carry the load together so if you're starting up a paradigm shift community just start mentioning it to your some of your friends you know just say like hey first of all there's this project that you can check out they do this crazy radio show every week and you know i want to start up a paradigm shift community in our area would you be interested in that and most people would be like yeah that's totally a cool idea let's let's roll with this you know like I, i've I've been watching all these crazy videos on YouTube and I want to talk to somebody about how reality is created by the vibrations of form itself. So, you know, that's what you do. You create a paradigm shift community. And again, you meet people through these paradigm shift communities, which is an amazing thing. It is a beacon. It is a portal. It draws people to them. People will find them. And people will get their lives changed by being involved with them. And I will say that from firsthand experience, the Paradigm Shift community in London is just thriving. It is amazing. Every week we have over 30 people within our meetings. And it's bringing together some of the most really just amazing minds within the London, Ontario community all into one spot. And and it's really cool because it's a form of activism in itself, a form of shiftivism when we can have these conversations and also take part in being able to do active group meditations. And again, you know, we've talked about this before, how meditation within a single spot ripples out into the surrounding community. So we do ours right downtown. So I'd like to think that through our actions, they ripple out beyond the physical meetings in ways that we can't even fully but it is happening. So another Paradigm Shift community that I got to give a shout out to is Paradigm Shift Holland, which is being administered by Kevin. So a big shout out to Paradigm Shift Holland. Anybody who's in the Holland area, definitely check that out, which I think is an amazing thing. There's actually, I know in the past, there's been other interests of people within the, uh, you know, within the Netherlands area who have been interested in starting up Paradigm Shift communities. So I think it's great to see more of that. We have in the past had Paradigm Shift Norway. There's been Paradigm Shift Germany. Um, I don't always hear back from them right away, but there's there they are there so uh, congratulations to holland i think that's an amazing thing it's great to see paradigm shift existing in multiple languages so shout out to kevin for getting the ball rolling on that and the next paradigm shift community this is the last one for this week hopefully we'll have some more next week to tell you about is paradigm shift columbia south carolina so this one i'm actually pretty excited about and i'll tell you why real quick because paradigm shift columbia south carolina is actually being admin by our good buddy michael brazel and uh some of you will recognize that name and that's because michael was actually the buddy who we started paradigm shift radio with if you go back and listen to the first early episodes of uh, about the first 12 episodes michael was there when we started and that's because michael has his own paradigm or has his own blog talk radio show that he does soul interaction radio which you well michael go ahead post a link for that in the live chat i know you're in there so people can check that out and he does that monday to friday and uh he's been doing amazing work and i think it's really awesome because he was in dc before and uh you know life happens and then he ended up moving to this new location in columbia south carolina and he says that you know like this is all part of the divine plan in the sense that he feels that there is a lot of opportunity within South Carolina to really make a paradigm shift community happen there. So I'm really excited to hear how things are going. And uh, it's quite likely that we'll actually hear from Michael in the show tonight. So I'm looking forward to being able to talk with him again. He's a really, really awesome guy. So and I know I know he's got a lot to share in terms of thinking outside the box. So that's really all I have to share in terms of the new communities and just being, again, just reminding people if they want to start up a paradigm shift community, go to paradigmshiftcentral.com. You can find the links there for the community admin group and also the how to start a paradigm shift community or just add me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Skull Babylon. 
and you can just ask me questions. Say like, hey, you know, this is interested in, can you just give me a little bit more information? And I am more than happy to be able to do that because that is what this project is all about. It's slow and steady, but it is definitely, definitely winning the race. So, but again, it's not, there's no rush, no rush, you know, like divine timing for everything, but it's awesome. It's awesome. So huge shout out to everybody who is involved with this paradigm shift project in itself. So, in terms of other community news, I just want to remind you guys to sign up for the Paradigm Shift newsletter, which is something that you can do at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash newsletter. You can check out the recent edition that we had there, and I will be posting a new issue for that, which includes all of the shifty media that is posted throughout the week, all in one convenient package. So, I mean, it's hard to keep an eye on all the Facebook pages. I know that. But if you go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash newsletter, sign up for that, and it will be delivered to you in a convenient easy to read package which you can also share so that includes the radio show and it also includes the videos that are being submitted by people within the community through the facebook.com slash paradigm shift central and theme with that also got to be able to mention that if people want to be able to help get their voice out to a global audience which is what this radio show is about but the whole project is about this as well if people want to if people are already making videos and people want to be able to help get their videos out to a global audience then just again if you want message me on facebook or join the content creators group which again you can find just through the main website paradigmshiftcentral.com it's right near the top join the content creators group submit your videos to there and i'll get you synced up so that we can include your videos in future newsletters and also featured on the website. So that means that you are actively getting your videos, getting your voice to an audience who is ready to listen, who is eager to hear what it is that you have to say. And these videos can be inspirational videos. They can be just you simply sharing your thoughts. They can be as professional or as non-professional as you desire. It is really all about practice. That is the most important thing. So in other news, I just want to be able to remind you guys that the journey to lucidity is still funding and of course you can check out that at gofundme.com slash journey to lucidity 2 and that is the full length movie that I will be out filming again in California at the lucidity festival lucidityfestival.com is the website for that and I encourage people to get their tickets soon and to also use the promo code SHIFT if they want to be able to get a discount on that ticket. And the Journey to Lucidity 2 is going to be a full-length movie that includes topics of lucid dreaming, metaphysics, infinity, and beyond, and it's all about elevating consciousness. And those of you who hadn't seen the first movie, you can find it again through the main website, but the sequel itself is going to be just an improvement on the first. I'm I'm going there with a, a clear idea of what it is as to how things are going to be able to just envision and come to fruition. I'm really excited about that, and I'm leaving leaving for California on April 7th, and this is pretty cool, I'm intending to actually be doing a live broadcast from the Lucidity Festival, so a special edition of Paradigm Shift Radio broadcast live from the Lucidity Festival, so I think that's actually going to be really cool if we can get that figured out, and of course, if you contribute to the GoFundMe, that will actually sync you up with an early access to the movie before its official release. The way how I'm doing this through the GoFundMe, just to give you guys an idea, because the whole idea of doing this project is that I want to be able to support myself as an artist to be able to continue to make more stuff that we can share for free. So the idea that I have with this project is that once we actually reach the funding goal, then we will be able to release the movie for free online. So until then, we're going to be continuing to raise funds, and the funding is up indefinitely. And we are currently at about about 25% in terms of the funding. So you can either just donate $11 to get early access to the movie. You can get a DVD special edition copy of the first movie. Or you can actually get like other... You you can order shift buttons through there. You can get other perks and all sorts of awesome stuff. But yeah, again, GoFundMe.com slash Journey to Lucidity 2, consciousness shifting stuff, awesome stuff. And again, just mentioning on the shift buttons, just reminding you guys that the shift buttons are available to order through the main website at ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash buttons. And these shift buttons are tools to help assist in the awakening of consciousness. They all have symbolic symbolism on them that are meant to evoke conversation. So the whole idea is that you wear a button with the eye of Ra or the flower of life or the yin-yang on your shoulder on your backpack, you run into somebody at a bus stop or on the bus or at your school and they ask you, hey, what's with the button? Then that sparks up a conversation and you can say like, oh, well, you know, you can actually have this button. Check out the website. Listen to the radio show. It's all about some really interesting, mind-expanding, thought-provoking stuff. So, of course, if you you want, order those through the main website. Use the promo code PSR or if you want to get some free buttons, you can enter into the raffle draw that we'll be doing once again tonight at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. So, simply send a message Listen carefully. This is how you enter into the draw for the free shift buttons tonight. 
but don't do this if you've already entered before. We only need one entry per person. Send a message to facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio and just tell us a little bit about what you think of the show, what you're up to even, and uh, yeah, just let us know that you want to be entered into the draw and we'll do that. And I think that's a really exciting thing. And of course, just in terms of that, we'll be giving away one batch tonight, but if we want to be able to give some bonus buttons tonight, then all I'm asking for is another additional, even a small donation to GoFundMe.com slash Paradigm Shift Central. So I know I know that's kind of a lot to mention, but this is that's the last thing. So if you if anybody feels that they if anybody wants to be able to help synchronistically get more buttons to more people out there that are literally changing lives, then send a donation to GoFundMe.com slash Paradigm Shift Central and then we'll be giving away two batches of shift buttons tonight. But as it is, we're just giving away one. So again, thank you everybody so much for tuning in and uh if i could tell you all that in 10 seconds i would i feel that i'm getting better and better at doing it each time and thank you for bearing with me those who have heard me say all that stuff before and uh with that said i'm looking forward to really getting into what this episode is about now that everybody is brought up to speed and of course thank you so much everybody for being here and uh oh one more thing this is important i can't not mention this paradigm shift shirts we got Paradigm Shift shirts now, and if anybody wants those, they can order those through teespring.com slash Paradigm Shift, and we got 12 out of 13 ordered, so if one more person wants to order that shirt, then we'll be getting the orders out there. That's just the way the website works. You have to reach your goal before they print them, and ours is 13, and we're currently at 12 at the time of this recording, so if you go to that or go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash shirts, you can find the link through there. Again, I made it really easy for you guys to find, but the shirts, they're cool. They got the Paradigm Shift sigil on it. They got the flower life behind the sigil and then they got the words choose to be the change that you wish to see and then they also got the color red and of course red is the color of action the color of change which is what paradigm shift is about you know a lot of people will often criticize the new age community if you sort of even want to use that term and say that you know it is all about just not taking action or is just about letting things happen but i'm personally encouraging people to take action which is what this whole paradigm shifting is about so you know whether you're going out there doing free hugs on a street corner creating your physical paradigm shift communities using buttons wearing a t-shirt that has the thought-provoking conversation topics on it to get the conversation rolling then those are some of the ways that we can bring this consciousness shifting stuff into our local communities, into our local realities, because your your immediate reality is what's the most important thing to you. So reflect, what can you do within your immediate reality? And we here at Paradigm Shift Radio want to be able to provide you guys the tools to be able to help do it and to be able to have fun doing it, because this is really exciting. This is really exciting stuff. So with that said, so... <laughs> And again, yeah, I know I use the term new age. I don't consider myself new age. Uh, new age is like a term that other people use. I mean, if you want to use that term, I understand where they're coming from, but that's a conversation in itself. You know, like we are the now age, if anything, right? We've always been the now age. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But anyways, with that said, we're going to be getting right into the conversation of why and how to think outside the box. And we're going to be bringing our good buddy Noah on to the show first off, just because I haven't heard from him in a couple of weeks, and I know he's always got some interesting stuff to share. And just in terms of how this topic came up, recently at the most recent Paradigm Shift meeting, and uh, there's actually going to be a video posted of this, and you can, again, just pay attention, sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get the video, or just, just pay attention to the Facebook pages. And at the recent converse, at the recent conversation circle we had, the topic actually ended up gravitating towards this question of why and how do we think outside the box. Somebody was coming and saying, you know, I'm a linear thinker, and I want to learn how do I start how do I start thinking outside the box. So of course, what is this box, and, and what does it mean to think outside the box? So I mean, there's all sorts of directions that we can take this in, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to explore it. And uh, if anybody anybody just wants to check out the Paradigm Shift London community, of course, Facebook.com/slash Paradigm Shift London. So yeah, feel free to check that out if you're interested in just seeing how that community is evolving in itself. So with that said, I'm going to bring on our buddy Noah, and of course, Noah is one of my buddies within the Paradigm Shift London, Ontario, Canada community. And a bonus shout out to anybody who's Canadian, just because. And uh, with that said, <laughs> going to be rolling right into this conversation and reminding anybody else, feel free to call in and we'll be bringing callers on. we got two other callers in the queue, going to be bringing them on shortly after this. So with that said, going to bring our, going to bring our good buddy Noah on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Yo, Noah. Mr. Skull of Avalon, how you doing? I, I don't have a voice. Um, you 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 okay, man? But I'll give all the voice that I have. Oh yeah, man, are you? Yeah, uh, it was a uh, Jewish holiday yesterday called Purim. 
which is very trippy. It's kind of like, uh, so it's like a, everyone dress, dresses up in like some sort of costume uh, to celebrate this whole, this whole long story, but the bottom line is it's all about actually seeing outside the box and looking at oh, people nice. like underneath their mask. It, I mean, there's a whole esoteric dimension to all of it, but really relates, again, to that theme of, of thinking outside the box. And cool, man. So past, past the mask of what people are and and seeing their true nature, kind of. That's what happened to your voice? You were just having so much oh, no, paradigm shifty discussion? Are you sick? Is that what... No, it's crazy. What you're, it's, it's a big like party, kind of. It's like the only... It's for some reason, I mean, it, it's been mis- misunderstood over the years, but there's an ancient teaching that uh, you're supposed to get to drink to a certain extent that you don't know the difference between the villain and the hero in the story. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, Judaism doesn't condone getting drunk, but it's just it's just a custom, like, in, in, in over the years of just kind of... It's, it's very interesting. So I just was dancing till like, 4 in the morning. <laughs> nice, man. Nice, and cool. I, I will say, Noah, just... As we continue, if you can if you can talk just a little bit louder, I know that's that okay, might be yeah. asking a lot. And uh, I don't know if you're walking around with your laptop there. Or we just heard. No, I just settled down. I just settled down. Perfect, perfect. All right, man. Well, it's good. It's good to hear you again, even if you are a little bit raspy. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I you're as welcome to stay on for as long as you choose. I'm not I'm not going to force you to stay here, but I am interested in hearing uh, what you have to say. So I mean, in terms of thinking outside the box, there's there's a lot. Oh. Okay, so apparently Noah just <laughs> apparently Noah just dropped as I was uh, talking about that, but I, I will just continue along with uh, my thought. And uh, maybe if uh, if Noah doesn't pop in within the next minute, by the time I finish this thought, we're gonna bring on our buddy Brad. And uh, Brad's the next one in the queue. And uh, as mentioned, Brad's the uh, admin for Paradigm Shift Kansas City. And uh, you know, in terms of thinking outside the box, like wh- what does that mean? And, and if you actually go and if, if you look at some of the past conversations that we've had with Paradigm Shift Radio, I mean, this is maybe just foreshadowing where this conversation might go to tonight. In terms of thinking outside the box, the things that I'm personally interested in, even the idea of multidimensional reality, what, what, what does that mean? Understanding that we are multidimensional beings by nature. Things like cymatics, you know, how, 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 is, how is this like tying into this idea that form is like, you know, and tying this into sacred geometry and being able to see these patterns all throughout reality. And then, of course, gets right into like lucid dreaming and the whole idea that like all these topics, they sort of branch from one thing into the next. And then you can get into this idea of like quantum healing, if you even want to use that, you know, like a lot of these topics are topics that mainstream boxes, if you want to use that term, have trouble talking about because it it is it's outside their box you know like oftentimes if you hear somebody will say like even just oh well i'm you know i'm a reiki master and then you know somebody will will be like oh i'm sorry to hear that i'm sorry to hear that you are crazy enough to believe that something like reiki is actually working but who is that person to say whether or not reiki is real just because they say that it's not real doesn't mean that it's not real it's just that from within their box it doesn't fit within their current paradigm in some way or another. So it's really interesting. And of course, you know, this, this again, this, this really sets up the platform to go anywhere, whether we're going to talk about UFOs tonight, whether we're going to talk about Sasquatch, whether we're going to talk about being psychic with your pets, which is something I always allude to and somehow we may or may not always get to it. You know, any of these things are, are things that I'm personally interested in, in talking about tonight. And uh, even I was listening to the radio today, even talking about the missing Malaysia airline. I'm uh, just putting it out there, but honestly, like, who's to say it didn't disappear into some sort of, like, void-like portal similar to the Bermuda Triangle? Because at this point, that idea is as valid as anything else on the table, despite the fact that it's outside the box of our current paradigm of what we would expect the possibilities to be. And I, I don't know, maybe maybe that's what happened. Maybe aliens did something crazy here just so that we can say, like, wow, you know, like our box does not explain what happened here. And then it gets into this whole topic of maybe even tying this in with ideas like the Philadelphia experiment and how that goes hand in hand. Maybe even talking about this whole idea of the wing makers. I know that's something that I talked about in the past episode, this idea of like a future society and, and uh, Al Bellick and he traveled through time and interacted with him and came back and tied up his story but again just putting some ideas out there whether or not we're going to talk about all of them we shall see so noah did not um come back for whatever reason but 
So it is. And uh, I'm going to bring on our buddy Brad, and then we're going to go with the conversation from there. And then we got another caller from area code 512, and we'll bring them on. Uh, yeah, we'll bring them on when it's time for them to be brought on. So, <laughs> again, thanks to everybody who's tuned in. And, of course, please continue to share the show with your friends. Let them know that we are just getting into the meat of the conversation here, into the thick, going, entering into the void here. And, I mean, oh, that's another great topic. You know, like, what about life after death? What happens after we die? That's that's a thinking outside the box conversation. So again, we'll 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 cover some interesting stuff tonight. I guarantee it. So with that said, we're gonna bring on Brad, and again, this is uh, Brad, the admin of Paradigm Shift, Kansas City. So Brad, if you're ready, I'm gonna bring you on to the show. Here we go. Yo, Brad. What's up? Hey, Yo, how man. How's it going, Brandon? Doing pretty good, man. Welcome, welcome on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Good to hear. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now I know uh, you you uh, you said you were putting together some notes related to this topic. Is that true? That is correct. <laughs> All right. Totally so, true. I mean, I'm just uh, passing over the the talking stick to you, man. Just in terms of thinking outside the box, why and how. What is it that you have to share with us tonight? All right. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Um, I wrote down. A couple of things, and it kept on expanding, and I imagine it will continue to expand and contract upon itself, just like everything else in the universe continues to <laughs> keep doing. But uh, I'm really here to talk about thinking outside of the box or inside of the box, however you really want to look at it, and I feel this is an incredibly important topic. Um, our society as a whole is meant to think inside of the box at all times, And it's become friend upon for most society to go outside of the box and inside the outside, outside the inside. When you go outside of the box, you're considered by many to no longer to be a part of society itself. And this includes staying inside of the imaginary lines and cities that have been created for people to stay inside of. And these are all just ideas and labels for different cities and imaginary lines and I mean those who live off of the grid for instance can be looked at as insane for not wanting to be a part of society itself or the way that we've created and put society forth for people to just kind of hop right in and uh, have their dream of a white picket fence and a family with kids and getting married um that's how people are taught through uh Mm -hmm. indoctrination of the school system itself um my father has a good friend in college who he always used to say went insane and when i would ask how he went insane i was told that it was because he decided to stop being a part of society and lived in the mountains instead (laughs) um when he first told me the story, I thought, wow, that's kind of crazy. And then the next time I heard him tell the story, um, I at after that point in time, um, I had lived in a tent in Northern California for six weeks, not long before that. And my experience living off the grid in that time period, I was able to learn and appreciate the 180 difference in lifestyle. Um, Just being in a small town, living in a tent with just one small cabin along with 10, 15 other people, um, sharing everything, everything being everybody's, and uh, just having campfires outside and being in the beautiful outdoor scenery of Northern California as opposed to what society sees as inside the box, which would be inside of a shelter at all times, watching television or playing video games or working or being on a computer, um, the two are one eight from each other and both ways of living have advantages and disadvantages and I believe, at least in my opinion, neither of the two should be frowned upon because they're both beautiful in their own ways and we're taught truth comes from authority, intelligence is the ability to remember and repeat, accurate memory and repetition are rewarded Non-compliance mm-hmm. is punished, as well as conforming intellectually and socially. Um, and these things are some of the things we're taught in school, which become social norms as we become adults. Um, everything's just an idea, and almost everything you believe is somebody else's idea. 
and language mm-hmm. is an idea itself. So the meaning of all words are different for everybody due to their experiences and how they have gone throughout their life. Um, those experiences take shape and form of how you interpret whatever label of is put on the word that you're interpreting at any point in time um, without people thinking for themselves um, that authority may not always be the ultimate truth. Intelligence can be found in many different ways. Um, Strengths and weaknesses are different in all individuals and we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. Um, Conforming intellectually and socially would lead to no new information as we would simply be working on accurate memory and repetition of the same things at all times. We wouldn't be able to realize that our globe isn't drawn to actual scale and that Africa is much larger than represented on the standard maps and globes of the world that you've seen throughout most of your life when you are looking at a map or globe. Um, The maps and globes show the countries and oceans and continents. They also show that it is just lines drawn that separate these places. And I've yet to see any sort of line when I'm driving around. (laughs) Why are there so many imaginary lines and all these labels upon everything? Uh, I mean, they're just wacky little lines dividing things up, and it is to divide people as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got politics to divide people between, at least in the United States, we have Democrat, Republican, so it's dividing people in two. Um, we have religion, which divides people in numerous different ways as far as you're either with us or you're not a part of us. Um, sports divide people in all kinds of different ways. You're either with our team or you're yeah. against our team. And uh, we have imaginary line border patrol separating Canada and the U.S., which I sure as hell never saw, but I wasn't able to really navigate past. Um, People think so inside the box that they will physically remove or jail you if attempting to cross the line while going outside of what is considered your own box that you belong to. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a huge issue which is causing open-mindedness, the evolution of consciousness, and healthy living, which is what Paradigm Shift is based upon, um, causing all these things to stall, and the propaganda on television, magazine covers, bumper stickers, T-shirts, and music, amongst other things, all send the same messages. This issue is that all of these things try and tell people how and what they should be thinking the issue can be found in people becoming complacent, not thinking for themselves, as well as becoming lazy. Um, some people feel that their thoughts are inadequate because they go against what is seen as normal in society, so their thoughts can become suppressed, and therefore some of the greatest thoughts and ideas in history likely will never be shared with anybody at all. Um, if you believe there should be an authority... It is an idea that you would be leaving slavery of the mind, body, and soul, and therefore are a part of different problems at different times. Um, and then people are taught to live in fear and protection or love and vulnerability. Fear and protection is what is portrayed through the media and propaganda as strong and reinforced behavior while love and vulnerability are conveyed to look weak. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to end this with a quote from Jim Valvano, which he stated, be a dreamer. If you don't know how to dream, you are dead. Um, And then death itself, you said you wanted to discuss death, and I just wrote (laughs) death down. Um, I believe, at least in my own opinion, that we come we don't come into the world. We came out of this world. And uh, when we do pass on, I mean, the idea of you either see all black or all white or you go to heaven, um, you'd still be seeing something. There would be some type of consciousness. You can't just necessarily see black forever. Um, that would be the concept of the color black. 
uh, white would be the concept of the color white. So you'd just be staring at that color for eternity, which, I mean, if you're doing that, then you would recognize and have the consciousness to see that you're actually indeed looking at a color of some sort, and therefore it doesn't seem very feasible or possible. I, anything's possible, but it um, doesn't seem feasible that that would be something that could happen. Um, I believe ultimately you go back to where and what you were before you were put into your body, which I believe in my humble opinion is possibly some type of free-flowing energy of some sort, whether we want to call it love or energy. Um, I mean, a baby is ultimately like a newborn baby would be a real sign of love in itself. What a pure sign of love is just like a newborn baby. Um, what other more simple way could you see something of the sort? And I will leave off with that. <laughs> right on, man. I think, uh, yeah, it definitely hit upon some key things there. And even just helping us uh, use words to explain what some of these boxes are in the first place. You know, you're talking about just like culture, whether they're geographical boxes or just like the programming boxes that are created through our institutions, through our schools, through our religions. Uh, no, I think... I think that's good. I think that's important for us to sort of think and, and ask, you know, like before we before we try and think outside the box, maybe it's okay if we can sort of realize what the box is in the first place. And, and it's amazing how many people, how much of society is dictated by these elements, by these, these boxes. And, and you're right, even going back to that story that you were saying about how um, you know, your 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 friend of your family went insane, so to speak, and and how he was labeled that way. I think uh, it's it's reminds me of that quote. You know, um, like those who couldn't hear the music, uh, or those like would. I oh, I forget how it goes exactly. I, I know people oh, are talking, but the brain. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like they it's like yeah, those who can't. Rain or not not just that but it was like it's like those who couldn't hear the music th labeled those as insane who were the ones that were dancing sort of thing you know so i mean it uh, it goes back to this idea that you don't need to follow a status quo and, and i think in a lot of ways it's obvious that some of these boxes they have their purposes but are they really leading people to a life of happiness or is it really just a life of contentment and uh, it's a yeah, it brings up some interesting discussion. And I know uh, I think Noah was gonna try calling back in. Um, I'm just gonna keep an eye open for him because he did say that he had a response to you as well. So Noah, if you want to call back in, and we also got a couple other buddies on the line who I do want to be able to bring on as well. And uh, yeah, you know, like even just thinking like how much our our world is programmed uh, just by our language and the language that we use in itself. And that's where you get into the things like phonetics and stuff. And I mean, even, you know, a lot of people already know this and it's just one of the ones off the top of my head. But even the word like government literally translates from Latin to like control the mind sort of thing. So, I mean, that in itself, you know, like government is one giant box in, in a lot of ways. So, I mean, I want to be able to explore more of this conversation in terms of how to think outside the box. And there's a lot of ideas um, that I can get into. And, and one of the ones, uh, I'll just mention this now, and uh, I'll just sort of set this up for uh, if Noah's calling in in the next minute. But one of the uh, one of the most important things that was ever told to me was this idea that and I'm sure I've said this on the radio show in, in the past, but it's this idea of believe nothing but see everything. And what this basically means is that oftentimes when we're practicing the practice of thinking outside the box, a lot of people can have difficulty with this because they're still holding on to beliefs. They're still holding on to things that they feel are are the mold that holds their reality together. And a part of them is afraid to be able to let go of these beliefs. But until they do, it's preventing them from understanding, really understanding future concepts that could potentially expand their perception of reality, could expand their perception outside the box. So 
even a conversation that we had in one of the paradigm shift meetings before, and I'll just mention this real quick, was this idea of the difference between having a belief versus a fundamental idea. And what I stress in this is the idea that a belief is something that oftentimes people will have difficulty letting go of. It's something that they hold on to a little bit stronger. Whereas a fundamental idea is a construct that in itself could very well be a pillar that creates your reality, but it's something that you are prepared to let go of at a moment's notice. So, I mean, you know, like something where if somebody's just like, oh, well, according to my beliefs, UFOs aren't real. But then if they were to see one in person, it, they would be like, oh, it would be like very conflicting for them. Whereas if that, if instead it was a fundamental idea, it was in that moment where you're just like, oh, okay, you know, like, like glad, like I'm glad that I can change this fundamental idea. This fundamental idea is not something that I was emotionally attached to. It was just something that was holding up the structure for now. But I can change this. I can I can recreate my building in like zero g gravity at any point by repositioning these fundamental ideas instead of trying to construct my reality around fundamental beliefs, so to speak. Um, if, if that does that does that make sense, Brad? Just the difference between belief totally. and fundamental idea. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would I would it recommend. Makes total sense. I agree with you. I would recommend that to people. So I mean, again, just using those terms, have fundamental belief or have fundamental ideas opposed to beliefs in, in a sense because you can let go of a fundamental idea at any point and uh, again going back to the idea of believe nothing see everything because uh, even on the last episode when we were talking that. about the uh, psychoactive plants a lot of people will say like oh well you know like this reality like psh, it's not that complicated those people who have had experiences in more hyperdimensional perspectives of reality, whether they even be within the, the the dream state or through psychoactive experiences, psychedelic experiences, even in those, it's just like, holy crap. If these experiences are real, then it's unfathomable to think just how much else can be created within this reality, how much else this reality has to offer that we cannot even really get so to speak. So it's, it, it kind of, you know, it kind of nerks me when people are just like, when they hear somebody, again, what I was talking about earlier, when they hear somebody talk about Reiki and they're just like, like, that's stupid, you know, like that's stupid. It's just like, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, have you seen how crazy reality is? Like, how could Reiki, like, how could, en lo you know, non-local energy healing not be something within a reality? But anyways, I don't want to keep babbling on. I'm sure I could do that uh, infinitely, <laughs> but <laughs> I'd like to be able oh, to bring on. on. <laughs> I'd like to be able to bring on some more callers, and uh, Noah's back in the queue with us. Uh, Brad, is there anything? I mean, you can stay on the on the chat, and and we'll keep Noah in in the conversation. Is that cool with you? Want to stick around for Sounds a bit? Good to me. Cool, man. Cool. Okay, all right. Let's uh, let's bring on Noah then, and uh, hear what he has to bring to the conversation. So, Noah, if you're ready, bring you back on. Hey guys, I'm back. Yo, Sorry. Man. All right, no problem, man. Wacky internet. Can, it happens. Can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah. Again, if you just want to speak as loud as you know comfortably okay but, yeah awesome. go ahead man. i was honestly just gonna touch to something that i feel it creates the opposite effects of what a lot of people i guess in this kind of community hope to achieve and, and hope to be in this world and that and that kind of relates to this idea that of course we're separate i mean of course we're we have something that bridges our connection but if you look into nature Everything that's every unique spark of nature is what makes it so beautiful. Everything looks different, everything appears different, everything has a different purpose and function. And I think what 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 bothers me sometimes is that of course there needs to be some sort of structure and some sort of sense of separation, or else what are we gonna be doing walking around? I mean, of course when you interact with people, we should look into the thing that bridges us together, which is the heart and the soul. But I just feel that there's too much by saying that everybody else that does a certain thing, like, for example, I, I'm a very spiritual person, but my religion, which I consider to be sacred and beautiful, is what allows me to truly understand reality in the greatest way possible that I can and to get the most meaning out of life. But how I choose to use that is how it either becomes a blessing or a curse. And I don't ever in my life intend to abolish my tradition or my sense of separation and uniqueness in order to become, I guess, to, to so there's less things that create barriers. I mean, 
we do to an extent need to have countries and need to have some sort of structure. And I guess, I guess what I'm really just trying to say is, is that, and I'm not saying this is necessarily you, uh, I forget your name who was speaking before. Um, it's Brad. Brad, Brad. Um, but I just feel very strongly that um, certain times and certain places, like people, for example, you mentioned something about how, you know, like there's a typical way that people live in this society. And, and you know, we all hear it. And, and I guess I choose to do things a little bit differently. But what makes me very unspiritual is is to actually look at that as not real or as less real than what I do. Um, they're both constructs of the human mind. When I decide to change my lifestyle and do things a little bit differently, that's still like, like that's that's just as real as what they're doing. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people think that it, people don't have joy in, in, you know, the picket fence with the house and the family. But I think that, I don't think there's anything so 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 wrong with that. Uh, in, I mean, I don't. I plan to do things a lot differently and to be very self-aware so I can try and make the world a better place. But I want to have a family with kids and I want to have a place to live. And and you know, there's so many things to appreciate about the society that I live in, despite the fact that there's a lot of insanity going on. Uh, and so when I think about thinking outside the box, sometimes when someone says you got to think outside the box it's required of you to think outside the box into their box. And so a lot of times people say, okay, think outside the box. Think about these things in reality and consciousness. But again, that's someone else's box too. And there are certain people that just, you know, are not genuinely interested in that or that's not a prevalent part of their life. Um, but they're doing so many other things in, in this world that are making a difference. And I just, I think that to think outside the box, it, that that term itself almost implies like, you got to think outside the box and then there's another box waiting out there. And so I just, I just, I just feel that. Um, and I, I think that started with my spiritual journey, which was just looking at all these ways that people are separate and being like, Oh, like look at how they're living and, and, and in, unintentionally actually being so unspiritual in the process. Um, and I guess what I'm just trying to say is for anyone out there that's listening, that's maybe going through this, like judge your spiritual success. And I'm not saying this, as as a box, like, that you should actually live by itself. I'm just like, just consider, potentially. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, but consider maybe that the most important spiritual things are, are the things that don't even seem spiritual, uh, like like how you, like how your relationship with, is with your mother, <laughs> or, like, with, like, the, the littlest things, like like cleanliness, or just, like, small little things that, that just ensure that you care and that you, you, you care about other people and other souls. Uh, and it's less about, you know, the interests that you have. Um, and I, again, I'm glad I wasn't distracting this to you at all. It's just something that I've experienced a lot recently is just people posting things that make it seem like, okay, they're, that it's about spiritual stuff, but it's actually creating all these other barriers of separation. Um and so more and more in my life, I'm just trying to really simplify and, and and just grow in the smallest of ways possible. And that to realize when I'm actually being very unspiritual um, by actually labeling what other people are doing as unspiritual, um, which can be a trap. And so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention that if that means anything to somebody else. But but definitely that's something that I, I, I see go on a lot in, in certain, like, shiftivism communities is just the creation of almost a new religion um mm -hmm. and that's not everybody in but yeah like you know there's a reason why for example like certain traditions have lasted so long um like for example like i'll never kind of I, it, it means too much to me to have been in my tradition but as skull knows like so much of how i care about my tradition is, is how i care and treat people outside of my my own religion um which is not necessarily practiced by all religious people, but, you know, so I guess there's never going to be a point in nature where everything just flows and melts into just one thing. And I think what's so beautiful is, is all the different shades and colors. Um, and this world's never going to reach a place of peace or whatever that we're looking for until we really honor, um, I guess, what other people are doing that's seemingly unspiritual to certain people. Um, there's a lot of heart and soul in our society People are still looking for love, and uh, sometimes it's misdirected in the sense that uh, we're chasing around looking uh, in places that maybe people, some people find it, maybe they don't there, but everybody knows. We know. We know at the end of the day 
that the true the things that are going to truly bring us joy, the things that are truly going to bring us, um, I guess, uh, kindness and, and compassion, and all these things is going to come just what we're beaming out from our heart. And for someone, it might be, you know, uh, like they have nothing to do with organized spirituality at all, but they just like are their whole life is just dedicated to serving others in some way, um, which I just think is amazing. I've just seen a lot of people that, you know, like I just try not to, to even call myself a spiritual person, so to speak, and just like interact with people. And, and, and that's kind of how I use my spirituality in a way. Sorry, yeah. family. I'm done. No, <laughs> that was good. I, I, I think, uh, yeah, definitely like the idea of, um, again, just not trying to, not trying to like, prescribe to specific labels uh you're right that that does sort of come up um and it's it's weird i mean it, it's it's weird how we even see that within the conscious community how you know like some people or, or you know a good example would be how there's like this ongoing sort of uh just feud between people who are meat eaters and people who aren't meat eaters and i always see posts about it and it's like a lot of like disdain going back and forth towards one another and i mean even just reading what uh what what um paul was saying in the live chat he's saying you know like there is there is no right or wrong there is only what's right for you right now and i mean obviously uh taking that with a grain of salt because i think there is a you know that's there's a sense of morality that sort of fits into the bigger scheme of things that we don't want to ignore but i mean i think is it you know is it is it within our with it like is are, are we should we be allowed to try and like criticize people for the box that they're in, or can we do it in such a way that is out of love? And, and I think that is where, you know, like sometimes you have to shake people a little bit, but don't do it in the sense that you're trying to be rude about it or you're trying to like, you're trying to like make fun of their box, um, so to speak. And I, and I think, Noah, you sort of represent that well, where even though you're quite, traditional with your with your jewish religion you are like incredibly open and loving to people of all faith to people of like all walks of life which i think you know it's sort of uh the what like what religion would have been or what it could what it should be in some way or another at its core the simple idea of just like treating others as you would like to be treated sort of thing so i mean if that sure. makes sense yeah yeah and and i i know i know there's still more to talk about and uh i'd actually like to be able to set this up to being bring on our buddy michael brazel who i mentioned uh earlier in the show and he, he is in the queue and uh again michael brazel he was with paradigm shift radio way back in the day so a huge shout out to him and uh he's the newest admin of paradigm shift columbia south carolina so i know he's got a lot to share and i know he's got a lot of experiences so i'm really interested to just sort of pass the talking stick onto him. So Noah, are you gonna are you gonna stick around for a bit? Yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because I might, I might I just... respond really quickly. Brad, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. By all means. Cool. I just like to say that everything is interdependent on everything else, and uh, literally everything. And you're saying that there isn't one, but everything literally is interdependent on everything else in the world. If we were to wipe out the bees, everything in our ecosystem as we know it will literally just fall apart uh what came first the chicken or the egg they're both the same organism it's we're all just literally one and uh we don't necessarily need structure or division that is just your opinion and um i'm jewish all the way through my bloodline i have through it all myself and i visited israel and I know that there is a huge separation between the people there and the Palestinians, and you can believe that I might not know what I'm talking about, but I have lived there, and for 10 days is obviously not as long as you live there, but there's definitely a way that people are raised into thinking that these people are going to just, I don't know if it's necessarily in their school systems or their parents teach them from a young age, but um, people are taught basically that these people are going to hate you and if you're believing that these people are going to hate you then you will you're almost trained or mm -hmm. taught or programmed yeah. to think the same way back and that's how a lot of people think 
there. It's basically uh, these people hate me, so I probably shouldn't like them very much. And it's yeah. all just a matter of them labeling somebody Palestinian and somebody being labeled Jewish, when in reality we're all a part of humanity itself. And in my experience, there is no right or wrong in any of it. Um, there's some right and some wrong in everything, and some everything is a little bit more right or a little bit more wrong. Um, it's just all a matter of perception. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, like I think uh, one thing I was just reminded of the other day is this idea that, you know, for any parent – teaching or educating their child in this day and age don't educate your children the way your parents educated you because the way they educated you was right for the time whereas now we live in a different age so i mean it it makes sense that we have to sort of observe our surroundings and just readjust you know rethink about the box that we are using to sort of like create as a template to sort of build things upon because i mean that's the idea you know like we're talking about this idea of thinking outside the boxes like again boxes in themselves have a fundamental purpose a box in itself could be a sense of tradition which is you know what noah and yourself were even referring to so i mean the boxes aren't the enemy so to speak but i think it's when we become so dependent or so naive of the realities outside the box is that that's where things get a little bit unhealthy, I would say. So uh, I want to get into some stuff later in the episode in terms of how to think outside the box. And I think Michael will probably have some insight on this, you know, even just talking about physically moving your body and getting the energy moving within your body. Um, One of the things that came up in the meeting was that, you know, reminding people that we are a conduit for the creative source of the energy itself. So if you're having trouble thinking outside the box and just practice being creative, practice even just like shaking your body and like just like shouting or just like singing, practice writing poetry, poetry that you don't even plan to share with anybody, practice like playing an instrument that you don't even know how to play and just do things like go out into nature. These are simple things that can help you think outside the box because it takes you out of your regular routine and obviously being around nature is a wonderful way to just see the outside the boxness of everything there, the fractals, the tendrils, the amazing just like feel that you get when you're not literally sitting inside the box of your room so i mean sometimes thinking outside the box physically means getting out of your box getting outside of your house and changing your environment and going up into the mountains where some people might call you insane but if you do it for the right reasons i'm sure i'm sure it'll pay off so uh yeah there's other stuff that i want to be able to mention uh even things like word webs word webs are a good thing that people can use just the idea that you can link from one topic to another. That's a good practice that you can do. Start with a topic. Start with a talk a topic. You'd say like something like puppies, and then from puppies you could talk about like something else. You could talk about like, oh wow, now I'm putting myself on the spot. <laughs> but like puppies, okay, like even the idea of like puppies. Puppies are basically like four-legged humans in puppy form, and then it's this idea of like, well, hold on, isn't that kind of funny how like puppies in themselves are just kind of like another version of us in a slightly different form and isn't it interesting how puppies always look at the eyes when they're talking to people too somehow they have an innate understanding to look at the eyes and then it's like well what's the deal with the eyes eyes are like you know they always say the portal to the soul and why do they look like universes and then suddenly it's just like as above so below it's like what how did this get here from puppies so try that try picking a random word for yourself and just linking it in a very branch like way from one topic to another as an exercise to practice thinking outside the box because i think thinking outside the box like anything else uh it's it's like a muscle that we have to practice using which is why listening to paradigm shift radio is a good place for us to be able to do it simply by listening to other people go listen to some go listen to some youtube videos on terrence mckenna he'll uh he'll help you think outside the box that's for sure so that said i'm gonna bring on michael and i'm sure michael's got some uh some words that he would like to share and noah by the way i just got you on mute just because you got a little feedback on your mic but let me know if you want to jump in so that said good to bring on Michael onto the show. So, Michael, if you're ready, here we go. Hello, Hello Michael. Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, man. Good to hear you. I love, it's good to be I love back. The, I love the fact that your mic is, like, awesome and professional and stuff, too. That makes me extra happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've learned <laughs> from yeah. blog talk experience that, you know, whatever you can do to help out the, uh, oh, yeah. the glitchiness. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Awesome, awesome. Well, I mean, like I said, welcome back on the Paradigm Shift Radio. Uh, we, we've missed you. 
uh, I will say, and it's wonderful to have you here again. Uh, just passing the talking stick over to you, uh, thinking outside the box, why and how, what do you have to share with the beautiful people? Well, yeah, it's a really, I think, an important discussion for now because we're seeing a lot of divisiveness. You know, there's lots of talk, you know, on Facebook about identity, and I think we're all trying to claim some type of identity on some level. And from a personal example, you know, my move from D.C. to South Carolina, um, in making that transition, having relationships and having work situations and, and having my spirituality tested really brought me to the edges of my box. So as my identity began to shift and change, um, I got to see myself in the process of expanding my own template. Um, Ram Dass says, you know, we go from one level of illusion to another. So it's like we just keep breaking the box a little bit further open. And if anyone's seen my picture, you'll see that I'm a walking out of the box statement. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, tattoo your face with sacred symbols and um, you decide to <laughs> live amongst the uh, people who are more conditioned to overculture thinking, you tend to be a challenge to that box that they may be in. And I think there are safe ways to engage those edges together without imposing our boxes on each other. I worked for people for the ethical treatment of animals for a very long time. So my job um, was to go out and talk about veganism and animal rights and to challenge that idea that animals don't have, they're not sentient beings, they don't suffer. Um, but what I found is it wasn't necessarily through the aggressive tactics, but through actual dialogue. When I actually got to talk to people about not necessarily our differences, but our similarities, we got to not necessarily shatter our boxes, but we got to have respect for each other's paths. Because so I think the word box really is constraining. Um, we talk about spirituality and our life journey. It's more of a path that we're on. And the path itself can be a box. Like, Yoga is a really good example. You'll have people who only do hatha, they only do ashtanga, they only do kundalini, and that's their that's their religion. And they will not deviate from um, their posture sequences. They don't like to um, mess with the tradition. And then there's people like me who have spiritual ADD, who were I feel put on this earth to challenge all of those constraints. And I think it's important to have those that hold tradition, but also those of us who walk so far off the path that we, you know, challenge the, the notion that it has to be done one way. So I, I think gentle conversations with one another, and the word mindfulness came up in the chat room quite a bit. And I think getting into a place where finding presence in our own experience and seeing where our edges are and then challenging our own edges. I always tell my students that the, the toughest thing and the hardest thing with spirituality or any practice um, that's disciplined is showing up. But once you start showing up, it's sometimes the fear. It isn't the discipline that scares us. It isn't the practice that scares us. It's the fact that once we show up, everything has to change. And when we start challenging the edges of our own experience, we begin to evolve. You know, And we have to be careful not to get caught in over cultures distraction. It's like if I have my yoga mat out and I'm going to do a yoga practice, I should probably get away from the Facebook and not, you know, <laughs> let myself get trapped into watching cute puppy videos. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so having a little bit of discipline with where we're challenging ourselves helps us to break free of our edges. Because so I think a lot of times we spend too much time worrying about other people's boxes. You know, <laughs> first look at your box and then and then allow yourself to be more connected to your own experience. And then you can dialogue with others about the shared experience and not necessarily through a place of challenge, but through a place of objectivity. And it's like, let's take a look at what we both have going on here. And we become mm -hmm. teachers versus um, warring parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, thank, <laughs> thank you. No, that's, that's great. And, and I, I, there's a couple things that came to mind, you know, I, I think you bring up a good point, you know, like the box is, is not the enemy and, and in a very real way, the box can be an ally and you're right. Like maybe not even using the word box is the best thing to use. I mean, even when you're talking about identity for me, uh, something that came to mind, I mean, oftentimes people will think about that, you know, they'll think how, how does their identity fit within a box? 
But then it's this idea that <clears throat> instead of that box being something that is handed to you, which is so common, the, the case with uh, overculture is a term that you use. You know, somebody, they give you a box and they say, this is your identity. This is your job. This is who you will be. These are your duties. This is what you will become. Whereas I think when you can understand that that box is being given to you in the first place, that this box is nothing more than an opportunity, then you can sort of step outside of it and almost play with it in the same way you would be sculpting, working with clay. So, I mean, again, you know, it's not actually just saying this box is just this one shape. This box is like a metaphor for a complex geometric shape that is who you can choose to make it into sort of thing. So, I mean, step outside your own box observe your box and then create your box create it into something that is magical create it into say like who am i who do i choose to be who is my identity and i think you're right personal identity uh is, is a very very interesting thing that comes up and, and obviously people will sort of get into this conversation of ego and that in itself you know people will say how like ego isn't necessarily the enemy like ego is a part of of the structure of the box it is a part of like a layer of paint within the structure that sort of gives it a little bit more characteristic, but maybe there's a better way to describe that. Um, yeah, no, that was just a, a few things that came to mind and even right. something uh, just in terms of thinking outside the box, a recent, uh, a recent, way of explaining things that came to me and I talked about this in a recent video dream log that I posted <clears throat> and those of you who are interested who haven't seen that of course just check out my YouTube to find out that but it was this idea how taking this outside the box you know like we are not just who we are right now who we are right now is only a fraction of who we really are and who we really are is like the character playing the video game and who we are right now who we think we are is just one character. But who we really are is like another person in, in a technical term, the daemon. And the daemon is D-A-E-M-O-N opposed to daemon, which is a meme from Always Sunny in, California, in, in Philadelphia, which is a <laughs> hilarious show. <laughs> daemon. Oh. Anyways, people. <laughs> <laughs> and which, if you think about the lyrics in that, like fighter of the night, man, um, friendship, uh, Master of karate and friendship for everyone. I mean, that's a good mo that's a good meme in itself. But what I was saying, you know, who we actually are is an entity or an, a, not even an entity, but a level of awareness that is beyond the perceptions of space and time that is played multiple characters throughout multiple lifetimes. Maybe some people refer to this as the soul. Maybe what we think of as a soul is only a fraction of the daemon. Uh, energy that sort of comes into an incarnation each time, but it just sort of opens up my my understanding to this idea. Um, going back to what I was saying, that when you sort of step outside this box and you realize that what we we are not just who we are right now, it also creates this opportunity to to, to decide from that power of the conscious creator of who it is that we want to create our character into. And I always use the term that this is so much like um, a massive multiplayer online role-playing game, an MMORPG, because it literally is. We are, we are creating our character. We are going through quests. We are leveling up, and we are gaining new items and abilities, and I think that is just one of the best metaphors for it. But um, sorry, awesome. Michael, I, I'm sure... I, yeah. or, or Brad, I don't know. <laughs> did, you, did you want to say anything, Brad? I just said that was awesome. Okay. <laughs> Metaphor Video game metaphors. Uh, games, uh, life, yeah. Yeah, but sorry, M Michael, if you just had anything yeah. to add on that, f feel free. And I got a, I got a question or two afterwards, but yeah, go ahead if you have something to add. Yeah, it was, it's, you know, we, we speak of ourselves being extensions of source or divinity, and in one of the witchcraft traditions that I studied for a while, uh, there's a, a really great quote from one of the um, the preceptors, and it's, you know, self is God, God is self, and God is a person like myself. And it really is saying that I am in I am the embodiment of the divine. So waking up to that part of ourselves that is divinity allows us to step onto our path more fully, being present with our own experience. You know. So one of the best things to do is look at where your distractions are because those distractions and the resistance is something we should learn to sit with. You know, if if I'm choosing to do one thing, I'm choosing not to do something else. So we really start to become more mindful about what we're giving our energy to, you know, and it's hard to challenge the edges of your experience or your perceived box if you're not taking the time to step away from that stuff 
that may be more um, distracting. You know, if you're finding yourself on the couch watching TV all the time, but you wish you were outside doing other things, get outside and do those things. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes it does take a little bit of discipline and a little bit of rigidity to find fluidity. You know, so we have to go into a place where we're doing self inquiry and examining who we are so that we can challenge who we are now. And it's through that grading. I always call it the sandpaper experience when we start to challenge our experience a little bit. And it can come through life mm-hmm. upheaval, like mine did. Uh, my entire spiritual system was completely challenged. You know, the relationship I had, the job I had, and even my spiritual practices at the time were completely falling away. And I had to adjust and shift because life became sandpaper. And it was shaping me. And I had to take a step back and just let it shape me and trust the process a bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, but sometimes we can do that within our own experience. We don't have to have massive life transformation to do that. It's not always recommended to, to, to quit everything or leave everything, but we can do that within our own space. If, if I've never done yoga, let me try it out. Like you were saying, if I've never done um, something, let me do that. If I've never gotten on a karaoke stage, let me sing a little bit, yeah. it, you know, things that challenge uh, our comfort zone. Jillian Michaels has a great phrase, you know, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> and it's those places of being uncomfortable that let us really grow and we evolve, and that's part of this this whole thing is what are we evolving into? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, going back to some notes that I actually took down from the recent Paradigm Shift London open discussion meeting that we had. One of the things that came up was the idea of embracing vulnerability as an answer to the question of how do we think outside the box? And and what you were saying, you know, like that, going back to the idea that like we've seen that diagram of like a little circle, like here's here's – you, like here's your comfort zone and then here's where life begins like outside your comfort zone sort of thing you know and i think even trusting your intuition is, is a big part of it oftentimes we'll create these blockages for ourselves that prevent us from listening to our intuition sometimes like our intuition is that voice is like that that playful child within us that says like you know like i like i want to experience this and then sometimes we'll have a part of ourselves, you know, whether you're associating it with maybe our chakras being closed off, if that's something that you want to think about it from that perspective. But then we're just like, no, no, like, uh, you know, it's not worth it. It's not worth my time. Like, I, 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 I have a, I can anticipate how that's going to happen. Therefore, there's no point even doing it. Yet when we do that, when we, when we embrace that vulnerability, it creates this amazing opportunity for us to experience something that is outside of our norm. And, uh, you know, even the idea of just saying, like, have fun. Having fun is a way to think outside of the box. So, Michael, I'd be curious, what are, what are some other techniques, some practical things that you could give people to help them, like, get into the practice of thinking outside the box and also being outside the box? That's one of the yeah. Brad, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I just like to say that tradition itself is the opposite of progress. So if you're doing something over and over again, just basically because it's what you're comfortable with or it's what you perceive as your norm and you're not going to navigate away from it in any way, shape, or form or look at any other possibilities, then ultimately you're not growing as a person mm-hmm. and you're not going to be progressing as a person and you will ultimately be in a loop of tradition which has not altered itself in any way as long as you keep it as something that you want to be a tradition that you're not going to actually take a look at and realize there's more, there's infinite knowledge in the universe that can be accessed and looked at and learned. And just by focusing on those certain traditions that you're looking at over and over again in the loop, um, you're just almost taking away the opportunity to give yourself the uh, chance to give yourself the universe in its infinite mm-hmm. capacity. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, sorry, I'll, I'll just, I mean, just re- replying to that, Brad, I, I, I agree in that, you know, literally what you said there just reiterates the Albert Einstein quote that I read at the top of the show, the idea of if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got uh, sort of thing. Um, and yeah, like I think, 
uh, one one thing I, I was just um, just sort of like passing this uh, over, over to to Michael. Um, in terms of what being outside the box can do, in the past we've talked about this idea of what is sacred, and I'll break this down for you in a way that I, I've put together over time, but it makes I, I feel it, it really explains it well. And the idea of think about it this way, like our life, like you are a river. That is what you are. And over time, we put pollution into our river. We put, blo- we put like garbage and we fill it up with all this junk. And as we do that, it prevents the flow of water to be able to move through the river. So part of what we want to be able to do is to be able to take out the garbage that's in our river, to take out the pollution that's in our river. And as we do this, state the obvious, the water will flow through the river with more ease. Now, the water itself is creativity is the source energy, is the creation of the universe itself, is a continuation of the Big Bang, is the entire force of the cosmos coming through you, is sacredness at its purest form. So just setting this up for what I was saying to Michael, what are some of the things that we can do to think outside the box, to be outside the box? What are some of the things that we can do to help remove some of the garbage that is polluting our river, so to speak? Well, I think well, I'm going to challenge that just a little bit um, because I do feel that on some level tradition is important. Um, we need foundation to move from. Otherwise, we're standing in quicksand. And if we look at spiritual dynamics and spiritual circles and groups and the multitude of traditions that are out there now, it can become overwhelming. So one thing that I encourage most of my students to do is we start where we are. So if you have a framework that you're working in, it just depends. You don't want to get locked into the rigidity of dogma. Um, Tradition can be important. If I have a a structured practice that I do that I meditate, and these are the tools and practices that I use, um, I allow myself to build consistency within my practice. You know, if I practice my yoga sequences and um, for a while doing sun salutations this way is going to be important for me to lay the foundation. But once foundation is laid, at that point, I get to challenge the edge of my experience. And it requires a bit of courage and vulnerability to actually challenge the edges of our experience. So there, there is a difference between we look at dogmatic approach when we're locked into the overcultures idea. And it happens more in religion, but it also happens with those of us who are practicing spiritual techniques like meditation. If you're showing up and just going through the motions, then it may be time to evolve your tradition. It may be important to challenge the structure of your meditation practice to try new things. But on some level... Some of us need to have that structure to have a place to start from. And once we examine where we are, then we have a place to move from. But for some people, you know, just coming into this, it can be overwhelming. And this is why for for some people coming into something like Paradigm Shift, where you can have these open and honest conversations about where you are and then get expanded into connections with other people who are also exploring those edges, you know, more staying on the fringe than being locked into one way of doing things, you can challenge yourself a bit more. But some of us need to have that, that foundation and that tradition, you know, first mm-hmm. so that we have a place to move from. And it can build consistency. Yeah. I yeah, definitely, definitely. I I know uh Noah was actually uh looking to come on to the air. I think he had a point or two. Um but I I would like to be able to get whether it's from Michael or, or anybody else just uh, again going into like the practical things, the the exercises that people might be able to do to help getting into the practice of thinking and being outside the box. So Michael, if you want to start yeah. up uh, some stuff on that. Let me just bring Noah on, and, and I will say we got less than 30 minutes left in the show just reminding people if they want to get into the draw for the free shift buttons, send the message to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio, and uh, we'll do that draw later in the show. And also, we do plan on doing a closing meditation within the last five minutes, and uh, maybe, maybe Michael, maybe you might want to set us up into that meditation if that's something sure, you'd be comfortable absolutely. with. Yeah, and I, I, I know you're there. serious. With it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, I know we got a couple other people in the queue. I know we have Paul in the queue. We also have Chad in the queue, and we also have Drew in the queue, and uh, I would like to be able to bring them on. So let's uh, keep things uh, concise at this point, and we'll see if we can get on as many people as possible. So with that said, I'm going to bring Noah 
back on. I'm going to unmute him and give him a chance to respond. So, Noah, you're back on the air. Uh, what is it that you would like to share? Oh, yeah. I, I kind of – well, first of all, I guess I could just respond to this whole conversation and that balance. Um, I guess what's so awesome about some of these traditions is how they sort of to offer. I mean, um, you know – it becomes alive when you do it because you, when you attune to a ritual of sorts, let's say it's even prayer, um, you're actually attuning. Like for example, the Jewish prayers were written by prophets uh, who who basically wrote them on such high levels of consciousness and such deep states of meditation um, that you're basically connecting to an, a, a lineage. Uh, when you do yoga and you're learning in a tradition, you're basically connecting to a sacred lineage, uh, which gives it so much power because it's worked for so many years over and over and over again throughout the generations that I almost look at them as tradition is what can actually in so many ways, if used properly, can help you progress so deeply in your spirituality. Um, even with your kids, when you have, if you have kids, if you even want kids, um, you are going to have to pass down something to them. Um, and what kind of wisdom do you want to pass on to them? What kind of traditions? You don't have to call them traditions, but I mean, they need some sort of guidance in life. Um, and, and to at least find their own unique spark. Um, so I think there's obviously that sacred balance between tradition and using the rituals to empower the consciousness of now, as opposed to looking at it as something in the past. Because every time I do certain rituals, like even the Sabbath for me, it is more alive than anything I could possibly explain to you. Um, I feel like I'm in a different dimension on Shabbat than I am on any day of the week, and I find it to be beautiful and relaxing and very spirit, very... Uh, spiritually energizing um, and without that connection to the tradition something would be lost uh, in my own life today um, but I wanted to say about what you said about practices of today that we could do in exercises I mean I've tried to simplify like I said before you know I, I had a hard time going to yoga classes I, I, I love the idea of really delving deep into the body um, but I always felt that yoga classes didn't move at my pace but I just started recently with some energizing yoga like yoga morning videos that are 15 minutes long, and then one before bed. I just simplify it, you know, go on the internet, I can send some links to the to Skull and he can put them through the chat. I found some very good videos that are about 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes long, that are very slow and easy moving. And that's what I think, you know, like these little things that you start doing when you don't complicate it, you know, you just start off really small with a little bit of, routines here and there in the morning and in the night um so i recommend if anybody is interested in starting yoga on a very unintimidating way just very short like videos on just really stretching the body in easy ways um i do my meditations day and night and i kind of make time you know once it becomes the thing about the great thing about routine if you do it mindfully what, what happens is it becomes such a part of your life that you automatically make time for it no matter what you're doing and without that, you never get started. And it's kind of like you just got to do it and start doing it and doing it. And then you're able to just create such a new lifestyle and such a new routine that's so much more positive. Um, so sometimes it's just taking that step to just starting and, and saying, okay, I want to do yoga, but maybe I'm not, I'm not going to go to the class or I want to meditate, but maybe I'm just going to start with five minutes, you know? And just like easy things like that, that really can get the spiritual practice started before bed and when you wake up in the morning. So I would mm -hmm. call it, instead of thinking outside the box, think inside the box, which is your body, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and start to, to delve into the body a little bit more and to, you, to start to understand yourself. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. all I wanted to say. And uh, I do have to go, so thanks, guys. I appreciate uh, being thanks, able to Noah. speak and, and to listen. And all the best to everybody listening. And good blesses, good, good wishes, good success, and lots of love. I love you guys. Bye. All right, thanks, Noah. I'll post your link into the live chat so people can add you. So expect some new sure. friends. I'll send so. you the links on some on some videos that you can put into the chat. Sounds good, man. All right, all okay, the best, bye. dude. Take Namaste. care. Cool. All right, so um, I, I'd like to bring chat on in the next minute. Uh, just before we do that, uh, just passing it back over. Michael, are some, there's some more practical things that you can let people know of to help get them thinking outside and being outside the box in that yeah. sense or another? If you if you're not journaling, you should. I mean, literally taking a look at your life in a in a place where you can literally take a look at it. Um, if we're not writing down and capturing um, where the edges are, it's hard for us to examine the edges. Um, and in that journal, the challenge I would give everyone tonight is write down 
five things that you want to do next week that are going to be challenge things. So if you've never done yoga, like Noah said, do YouTube yoga. It's where I tell people to start. Find a YouTube yoga video and, and do it. Uh, a challenge could be going out and have a, a shifty conversation with somebody. Talk about paradigm shift. If you're not doing it, challenge yourself to do it so you've expanded yourself out a bit. So write down five things tonight in your new journals, if you're not keeping them, and in your old journals if you are, that will help you to challenge yourself a bit so that you can start examining where that box actually is or where your past is so you can start exploring it a bit deeper. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Definitely. Can I definitely, clarify something sure. really quickly? Brad, absolutely, man. Jump in. All right. Um, as far as tradition goes, um, I mean, the way you look at tradition, obviously, as I was saying earlier, everybody has their own definition and beliefs and the way that they take that word and the way that they look at it and the way they define it. Um, I believe that in my definition of, or my belief in it itself, um, you take something such as, say, doing yoga five, six days a week or every day of the week, um, eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to plateau. So in that tradition of what you're doing with the yoga, you would have the ability to progress what you're doing in order to make it better or at least attempt to make it better as opposed to just continuing to do it the same way over and over and over again. And it's just having the ability to look at something and think about is this still the best way to go about doing this or is there a way that I can possibly progress and make it more beneficial in some way or another? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, never never really being, you know, don't, don't, you don't have to settle on one thing. Always be sort of like uh like Michael was saying, even just using the journal to sort of reflect on where our edges are. I think uh that's an important thing, you know, stagnation is a uh, death as some people might say. So I mean, yeah, always always being willing to allow yourself to change and yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of obvious stuff there for us to keep in mind. So uh with just keeping things moving along, we got less than twenty minutes left in the show and I'd like to get to the closing meditation with about five minutes left. So we're gonna bring on our good buddy Chad and Chad he's uh, joined us in the after party hangouts a few times and I know he's got some very interesting things to share. So Chad, if you're ready, gonna bring you onto the air and then with time permitting we will see if we have time to bring on Paul and then possibly Drew. So Chad gonna bring you onto the air. Here we go. Hello, Chad. All right. Hi there. Hello, man. <laughs> um, well, great, discuss- great discussion as always. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, about wordplay and stuff and the phonetics you're talking about. There's three words I want to bring up. And the first one that I've always um, thought was very interesting was Jordan Maxwell's definition of understanding, where if you wanted to, to and he explains why, if you wanted to um, put something very heavy on a second floor, what you'd want to do is you'd actually want to ins- inspect the, the, the foundation. So you'd actually go downstairs, and you would be un- and you would stand under the foundation, so that you can um, be able to build upon the infrastructure. So to get better understanding, you literally have to stand under what you're looking at. And I always thought that was a very cool um, hmm. uh, definition that kind of opened my mind to take a look at words a little bit. Di- deeper and a little bit different Mm -hmm. and when you do that you get like these weird understandings of things uh, like the word asking Um, you break down asking you get as king because it's only the king that's allowed to ask questions Um, and that leads me to um, something I've been talking about all week is is principles so you got the prince now and of course a principal in our school system uh, I don't think they do a very good job of teaching principles but they have the principal at the top of the school. So instead of, instead of the principal being the foundation of our education system, you have the principal as a, as a head figure, which teaches you um, authority. So it's, instead of the principal um, foundation up, you have principal from the top, top down, which I always thought was interesting as well. Hmm. Um, there's a... Um, there's a book on, on the seven liberal arts, and I think on I forget what page number it's on, but it talks about the fact that if you're reading this book um, and you're not over like 80 years old, you have never had a classical education 
um, in your lifetime. And it's a very, a very weird <laughs> thing to say. But, but the reason is, is because the seven, seven liberal arts and the trivium and critical thinking and how, and how to think has literally been taken out of our, our school system completely. Um, actually, not, not completely. I actually um, dated a girl for a while, and she's from the 1% group, <laughs> the hated 1% group. And I, talking to her, I found out that her education system was vastly different than my own. She actually went to a school where uh, one of the kids had a Lamborghini, and as she would drive into the school parking lot every day, he would, like, ram his Lamborghini and ground it into the parking lot, like, every day because he just didn't care. Um, but I found out that they have they have whole classes on on critical thinking, how to how to weed out fallacies from the news. Um, they have all these different extra things that I never got in school. Um, I skipped a lot of school too, so that might have been some of the reason. But um, but intellectual, but like we need to learn how to um, pick out all these fallacies and have this intellectual self defense. Because if you don't have that intellectual self defense, if you don't have those principles and the fundamentals down, then you're going to get swayed left or right. Um, in these different groups, these different directions, and you're going to be lost your entire life. That's, and that's something that I've kind of found out. Um, but but I but I think what allowed me to um, not fall in a lot of these traps is that I always kept you know an open mind. You know, I would try to think outside the box a little bit at different angles and try to see from both sides. Um, so I wasn't I wasn't trapped. Um, too much into those things. Of course, of course, we all fall um, prey to those types of things. Um, but um, yeah, the trivium is a really cool thing. If, if you guys don't know what that is, um, when you learn how to think and critical think like the trivium, it's the difference between um, learning how to play a song versus learning how to play a guitar. So if you go to a teacher and say, "Hey, um, I, w- I want to play this song. Teach me to play the song." Well, they can teach you how to play the song really easily. And now you're like, okay, well, now I want to learn a new song. Well, now you have to go back to that teacher again so they can teach you the new song. But if you understood the principles and the fundamentals, um, the grammar and, and, the, and the logic and, and the rhetoric um, behind, that, behind that music, so if you learned how to, what a musical scale was and what the notes were uh, and, the, and the scales, if you really learn those first instead of just the song, well, then you can teach yourself any song, and you're and you're freed from having to go back to a teacher mm-hmm. once you once you have these these principles. Yeah, definitely. Just learning to be self sufficient in a lot of ways. I think that's a yeah, that's a really really important point you hit on there, Chad, for sure. Cool. Um, Chad, was there anything else you just want to hit upon real quick? No, I just wanted to ramble on as, as much as possible in a short amount of time. <laughs> cool, man. Cool, man. For sure. Uh, wh- one thing. Oh, oh, uh, oh, well, actually, one, go ahead, actually go ahead. one quick. One 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 quick thing is I want to talk about John uh, Taylor Gatto, who won um, Teacher of the Year for New York State and also New York City, and he actually quit on the um, on the uh, was it, what was the paper? The uh, paper was the Wall Street Journal. On the op-ed page of the Wall Street Journal, he quit his job and said. And said that he's quitting because he doesn't want to hurt kids anymore. Hmm. And, and the way he taught was very interesting because he got kids out of the classroom. He was always scared that some minister would walk into one of his classrooms and find out that, like, three people were there. Um, because he, he encouraged all the students to, to get out. He had, one, he had one student who was an avid swimmer, so when he gave, came to uh, give her a project, um, he, he related... The, the things that the teacher he related them to what her passions were, so she was able to to um, get outside the classroom and follow her passions to get to get these life lessons and, and so forth. So it's just a very very different way of mm-hmm. of teaching, and he won yeah. teacher of the year for that. But people didn't realize that he was teaching very very different than the, than the classical classical way. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got. Cool, man. One one thing that I did want to 
mention, uh, even just from my personal experience, and, and it actually segues uh, with what you were saying in terms of like teaching, teaching children and just being aware of uh, you know the the current boxes that are sort of already there and whether or not we're we're prescribing to them as the teachers. Uh, those who have uh, have me on Facebook, they saw like they I put up this post. I'm just sharing this real quick, and I'm going to bring on Paul in a minute. But uh, I do uh, birthday parties for kids on weekends, and I dress up as superheroes for my different job uh, for the different job occupations and one of the characters is Spider-Man and long story short what I was doing is that when I'm there in addition to playing games with the kids I try to teach them some sort of moral lesson and I teach them oftentimes I'll teach them that you know uh, like the role of the superhero is not to be a bad guy to the bad guy, which means that you don't just fight a bad guy. That's not always the best opportunity. Because I said, you know, like, maybe he's not a bad guy. Maybe he's just having a bad day. And in that sense, you know, like I told him, like, the strongest superpower that we all have is the power of the heart, the power to have empathy, the power to ask people how they're feeling and to let them know that you care and the power to listen. And then, you know, just show them that you're there and to let them know that you forgive them. And then and to just give them an ear to listen to and to l- give them an opportunity to like not be acting out of frustration and to meet their frustration with love instead of with more frustration. So it's interesting that the 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 Hollywood version of superheroes is kind of not always setting the best example for children. So I mean that's where I'm trying to sort of plant those seeds uh in some way or another which I think uh, is really interesting because I know the the kids they they are receptive to it and and I had a good experience with that today. Um well, let me bring on let me bring on Paul and and we got 10 minutes left and uh Paul I I apologize uh we're literally just going to have to keep you within about three minutes of airtime, and then we're going to segue this over to the button draw. Last reminder for the button draw, and also I think uh, then we're going to set it up, and then Michael's going to lead us with a closing meditation. So with that said, Chad, thank you, thank you for adding your voice to the conversation. And uh, again, reminders: everybody, we'll have the after party hangout, Facebook.com/slash Paradigm Shift Radio, to find the link for the Google Video Hangout that we'll be doing after this episode concludes. So with that said, good to bring on our good putty, our good, <laughs> good putty, our good buddy. <laughs> Paul Bogey, <laughs> who hasn't been on in a while. So, Paul, I'm going to bring you on to the air. Here we go. Hello, Paul. Hi, good, good, good buddy or putty. I, I, I answer <laughs> to, to either, either or. <laughs> Paul, it's good to hear Hi, you. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Skull. How are you doing? Doing good, man. So, literally, again, oh, no. time being of the essence. Mm-hmm. Uh, right into this, anything that you want to share? Maybe any practical techniques as to how to get outside that box? The... the the, the box is always changing. It's it's your view viewpoint. How, how do you get out of the box? Do do different things. Always think, you know. For for example, you know stuff that you think you know. Google, go and Google something and find out other stuff. Like like for I love throwing things at people. I love throwing stuff out there. Like for example, yoga. A lot of people love yoga. Now yoga, very very interesting. Did you know yoga is the basis to Shaolin Kung Fu? Because the the, uh, the the Shaolin warriors, the monks, were Buddhists, and the, uh, Buddha Rama, round about I think it was the 14th century, went to uh, went to China and went to the northern Shaolin temple first and said, "Guys, you are spiritually enlightened, but physically and mentally you are unfit." So he taught them yoga, and from the yo from from the yoga techniques he taught. They studied the animals and and learnt different fighting forms, but the fighting forms were for fitness. So that for Shaolin Kung Fu originally wasn't for a martial art as in to hurt people. It was about self development. So just you know seeing things in a different way. And when I went to uh, on the way to Tibet, I went to uh, India, and and the yogis I met were were far different to the original yoga I'd, as a young kid, I'd sort of seen and, and in, in the UK, because I'm British. Um, and, and it gave me, it took me out of my box. And, and that's the thing, always do something different. You know, what was that saying? Um, do, something, do something every day that scares you. So, you know, be, be different, be sporadic, go and look at things. And, and if you think you know something, Go check, find out, you know, do something in a different way. So I think yeah. that's my time up. 
Nice, nice. I think that that definitely sort of sets us up nicely. So thank you, thank you, Paul, for for sharing that. And, and yes, everything everything is constantly changing. Change is the nature of reality. So to try and not change, you're going against the nature of reality in some way or another. And uh, we'll catch up with you. So one of the best ways is to just sort of ride that flow, accept vulnerability to be realistic, have courage, and to know that you're supported by the universe. And uh, you will find that your box will continue to change shape, expand, and uh, evolve into all sorts of amazing, complex geometric patterns, each one more beautiful than the next. So thank you again for everybody tuning in. We're going to get into the button draw, and then Michael's going to set us up for just a closing uh, four-minute reflection slash meditation while we play some music in the background. And I'm just going to do the button draw. So again, thank you everybody who submitted for the button draw. And of course, you can get buttons <coughs> through the main ParadigmShiftCentral.com website. And of course, if you enjoy Paradigm Shift Radio and you want to be able to help support the evolution of this community and our ability to give more free buttons to people, then please consider becoming a monthly supporter for the project for only a couple dollars a month, and you can do that at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash donate. And another reminder for everybody in the chat, this is a time to post your profiles to let people know that they want to be, that you want them to add you so that we can all get connected. we got 47 users in the live chat, so post your profiles now if you want people to add you, and I'll copy and post those profiles onto the Facebook page after. So this week's winner for the shift buttons are, with no time to delay, the universe has synchronistically chosen this week's winners as... No, wait, that's not right. You already got some. Uh... <laughs> as... Uh... Matthew Parker. All right. So Matthew Parker is this week's winner for the shift buttons. So I'm going to be sending a message to him. And of course, you can tune in again next week for more chances to get those shift buttons. So that said, reminder, join us again for the after party hangout. And uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Noah. Thank you to everybody listening. You guys are amazing. Continue to be the shift where you are. And uh, think about starting up a paradigm shift community and it will uh, literally change your lives and uh, change the lives of the people around you. So uh, Paul and uh, Brad, I'm gonna have to mute you guys. So thank you guys, yep. and uh, I'm out. Uh, I'm just, thank you. Thanks, Brad. We'll see you in the hangout, man. Changing. Cheers, guys. And uh, Michael, I'm gonna keep you on. And uh, literally, I got a audio for this background music, and I'm gonna start playing this now. And then I'm just gonna give you some opportunity to just get us to connect with our breath. So just passing the talking stick over to you, Michael. Thank you for doing this, and uh, everybody just wants to relax and. Take a moment to reflect and embody what it is that we are here to be. Go ahead, Michael. So just take a moment to just bring gentle awareness to the space around you. Bring awareness to your connection to the earth, whether it be your feet, whether it be whatever you're sitting on or laying down on. Bring awareness to the deep inhale as it moves through your body. Be aware of the exhale as it expands outwards. Each in-breath, an action of connection and alignment. Each out-breath, a connection to all the space around you and expansion. Continue breathing deeply and fully, allowing yourself to connect downwards to the earth expanding upwards into the sky. Inhale deeply and fully and just enjoy this moment.
bring your awareness back to the breath. Bring your awareness back to the space around you. Feeling connected through every inhalation and exhalation to everything that exists. Everything exists within you and outside of you. Continue breathing, sharing this moment not only with yourself, but with all of existence. And as always, remember, you are loved, you are beautiful, and you are divine. Namaste. Thank you, Michael. Thank you to everybody My pleasure. who's been tuned in. And of course, reminding everybody that they can join us in the after party hangout and uh, join us again for next week's Paradigm Shift Radio. And please continue to share this episode with your friends and continue the conscious conversation where you are physically with the people in your community. And uh, make sure make sure you're taking some notes in that journal of yours that you're definitely going to be writing in. That's your little assignment for the week. So, <laughs> cool. All right, so wrapping it up here as I get ready to play the outro music. Michael, thank you again, and uh, you. join us again in future episodes. So until next time, Internet, we'll see you in the future. So join me in saying farewell to the Internet. So bye, Internet. Bye, Internet. Michael, you have to say, say goodbye to the Internet. Yeah, bye, Internet. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. See you guys in the future. Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you would like to connect with people where you are and continue the conversations further, then check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash buttons to order your supply of shift buttons to share with people to help invite them to this global project while also helping make new friends and building local community where you are. Shift buttons are tools to hack the matrix and tap into the synchronistic nature of reality to accelerate our collective awakening. Enter the promo code PSR into your order to receive additional bonus buttons to your supply. Thank you again, and one love.